Hello and welcome to Battle Report number 9 for the channel. This is a Kings of War Battle Report. The battle will pit dwarves against dwarves at around 1000k. The scenario is pillage. And just a precursor to this, this battle was a demo game I set up for another person. So, uh, the list is pretty quick and short here. So. He brought a regiment of shield breakers, a regiment of iron guard, a regiment of iron clad, a troop of crossbows, a troop of rifles, a king, an army standard bearer, an organ gun, and the bombard. I brought a horde of shield breakers, a regiment of iron watch, a regiment of earth elementals, two troops of rangers, a flame cannon, army standard bearer, and stone priest. Deployment as shown for my opponent, organ gun, uh, watch, crossbows, I believe, shield breakers, bombard, yep, shield breakers, bombard, king, iron guard, and crossbows. My deployment from right to left is the rangers. Shieldbreaker Horde, Elementals, Flame Cannon, then Iron Watch, and some Rangers. So an overview of the battle. Um, we probably shouldn't have done this on a 6x4 table. We did roll up Pillage and we rolled up all the tokens. And being slow dwarves, it takes a little while to get places. So uh, just another overview of the deployment. Vanguard. Uh, I'm the only one with Vanguard, so my Rangers on the left move up, my Rangers on the right move up, and I fail to take a picture of my dice for turn one. So my opponent won the roll off to choose who goes first and decided he wanted to go first. I said, that's fine, makes just as much sense as not. So uh, his regiments move up a little bit on the left, his other regiment and his king move up. His crossbows shoot my rangers for a couple damage. And that's about it. So we go to my turn one. Everything fires forward as you can see. The uh, rangers go take a happy position in the woods. And otherwise everyone else just moves up as fast as they can. And the opposite side is showing that everyone moved up as fast as they can. Except the rangers at the bottom, they are within shooting range of their target so they're gonna hang out and as they go into the shooting phase they shoot the uh, crossbows the other rangers shoot the organ gun and we are able to route the crossbows on turn one by shooting four damage and rolling an eight which is pretty good so that will bring us to turn two sorry about the blurry picture uh, my opponent moves up a little more cautiously uh, mostly just his regiments. And you can see over here his regiment and his king move up, staying out of charge range. We hop into the shooting phase. His rifles put a couple of damage on the earth elementals. <clears throat> his organ gun unleashes a huge fury and does a single point of damage to my rangers because they're in the woods. So not a lot. Uh, we move on to my turn two. On <clears throat> my turn two, my uh, shield breakers take a little trip over the fence so they don't go very far. My rangers do a little bit of pivot just to get a couple more things in range. Everybody else moves on up. As you can see, uh, my rangers on the right move up as fast as possible. They can now claim that token, swing around a little bit, and start shooting at his bombard. My rangers in the woods take a few shots and hit the organ gun. I throw my puppy at his iron guard to no help. And the flame cannon, oops, sorry about that. The flame cannon attempts to cook the king to uh, very little effect, doing a single damage. The organ gun does get wavered. So we hop on to turn three. Again, I forgot to take a picture of the dice, but I'll remember to work on that later. The organ gun is headstrong on his side. Um, as a 
spoiler alert, uh, I guess anyway, but we end up making every single one of our headstrong rolls throughout this game, so wavering is not terribly useful. My opponent double charges my iron watch with his king and his iron guard. And that's just an overview of, that's basically all the moving he did. He uh, wanted to throw his puppies at my shield breakers and shoot them a little more, which, you know, seems fair. So, uh, start right in the shooting phase, he throws his puppy. I think this throwing dog is represented as a slayer here. Uh, doesn't do much damage, but the organ gun does plenty of damage. So these guys are okay, but still pretty good. The iron watch takes six points of damage, but hold. Uh, we move into my turn. Uh, not a lot of movement to talk about. So uh, we're just going to shooting. Um, my Ooh. excuse me, sorry. Uh, my flame cannon again tries to cook the king. Does a, a single point of damage to him, which is okay. Nothing special. Uh, my rangers pop a couple more shots over at the organ gun. And this is just showing my iron watch charged the iron guard and did three damage. My golems appear to have charged the shield breakers and did two damage. Ah, so yes, there was movement. I just didn't take a picture of it. Sorry. And my iron... Or shield breakers charge his iron watch and do looks like six points of damage. So pretty respectable. <clears throat> we end up wavering the iron watch. And we'll go on to turn four. Uh, turn four, my opponent makes his headstrong wool on his iron watch, charges back into the shield breakers. The shield breakers charge into my golems, and the iron guard charge into my iron watch. Man, that's a tongue twister. Just a, another picture of an angle showing that. Um, he takes a few shots at my standard bear here and does a couple of damage. The organ gun takes a couple more shots at my rangers here and does a couple more damage. And wavers them. In the combat phase, the combined might of the iron guard and king route my iron watch without much difficulty and he reforms as such the shield breakers do a fantabulous job <clears throat> against my golems and rout them and reform as such onto my turn four my rangers make their headstrong roll my shield breakers charge the iron watch again uh, my characters just move up and out of the way there. You see a little bit at the bottom. And my flame cannon uh, decides to close the gap between him and the iron guard as much as possible since he is going to get charged, but I would rather him make up as little distance as possible coming to the other side of the board. Um, my flame cannon also intends to cook the iron guard. So, um, in shooting, my rangers waver the bombard. And shooting on the other side, my rangers route the organ gun, finally. We move into combat. No surprise, my shield breakers uh, demolish his iron watch. Um, and now we're going to move on to turn five. I, I miss shooting. Um, and shooting my flame cannon does nothing, I think, to his iron guard. So... I didn't bother taking a picture of it. So turn five. Um, overview. Uh, more or less an overview. All right. Well, then into, into the movement. Um, his iron guard and king both charge the flame cannon, not surprisingly. His standard bearer charges my standard bearer. For fun, I think. Uh, we move into the shooting phase. His rifle's on the hill. Put a damage or two onto the shield breakers here. In combat, his standard bear whiffs my standard bear. So it just bounces off. And no surprise, my cannon, flame cannon, takes a 21 points of damage and routes. And he overruns and reforms as such. And just another picture of how everyone has ended up. 
uh, into my turn five. Mm, nothing happening on the side of the board. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I should I didn't mark these with arrows, but my characters both run off to chaff his remaining regiments. My rangers uh, do a full pivot, so they just turn around. My rangers on the right shoot and successfully rout the bombard. So he is no more. Turn six, forgot to take a picture again of the dice. Uh, my opponent in turn six, uh, just attempting to pull a tie, does a little shooting uh, at my shield breakers, but does not rout or waver them. Uh, the regiments of his just move forward. Um, the Iron Guard are currently claiming a token, so at this point in stage, my this point in the game, my opponent is hoping for a seventh turn, uh, with the hope of being able to dislodge somebody to pull a a tie. Uh, my turn six, my Rangers fly over to their token as fast as they can to claim it. And that's it. That that ends up being the, the end of the game. Um, we roll off to see if there's a turn 7, and there is not. So in conclusion, uh, the victory is to my dwarves over his dwarves. I was able to claim three objectives, and he was only able to claim one, um, which is fair. Um, just going to thoughts quick here. It was a it was a quick game. It was well. It wasn't quick. It was a it was a learning experience uh, for my opponent. He had never played Kings of War. He was an old fantasy guy, and he wanted to get back in and try it. So he had actually found me on Facebook, and and we set up a game. Um, I I thought it was pretty pretty good. I think in, in the future, if I do demo games, I might just do kill. I've done three demo games now, and. I followed the roll-off for a scenario, but I think I might just link kill in the future, uh, just to make things a little cleaner. Um, as far as whether or not I'm pleased with any of my units, I it wasn't really that kind of a game um, where I was trying to min-max or, or perform above anything else. It was just kind of a fun, a fun little game, just trying to make a thousand points quick so that I can play. Um, my opponent, though, is... A, Substantially displeased with his bombard, which landed zero out of six hits. I, I tried to warn him before the game that uh, artillery is a, uh, is not that great, uh, in a lot of times. But he wanted he wanted to try it. So, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. This was a little bit of a short one. Um, I have had gotten in a, in a lot of games, but they've been demo games like this, so I haven't wanted to make battle reports out of them that badly. Um, hopefully by this weekend I can get in a more big competitive game and I'll, and I'll make another battle report. But thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you next time.